Hughes' YouTube channel. I'm Kristen Butler, Director of Programs. And I'm so excited to have you joining us for our uh, National Juried Exhibition Jurors Talk today. If you're watching the live stream, please feel free to ask questions anytime in the chat and we'll pose those questions to our speaker at the end of the discussion. It's now my pleasure to introduce our exhibitions manager, Sydney Dexter, who will be discussing the show with juror Noah Smalls. Hi everyone, I'm Sydney Dexter. Thank you so much for tuning in for our first ever virtual Art Matters talk. I'd like to thank all of our artists who submitted work for consideration in this year's National Jury Exhibition. And again, congratulate our award winners who we will discuss later on in the presentation. I'd also like to thank our National Jury Exhibition juror, Noah Smalls, for joining us today from Massachusetts and for reviewing over 500 artworks from 22 states to make this exhibition happen. Uh, without further ado, here's Noah. Sorry, it looks like there. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Noah. Um, are you ready for me to present at this time, Sydney? Should we go? All right, I'm gonna share my screen. I'd like to start by just thanking everyone who submitted artwork. Uh, it was a really great experience. Can you see the presentation okay? Great. So, um, my name is Noah. I am a uh, museum exhibition planning and designer. Presently, I am uh, the director of the Upper Darby Art Gallery, which I co-own with my wife. Also the director of the Rush Arts Philadelphia Art Gallery in Logan, Philadelphia, uh, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, I'm also the uh, director of exhibitions and collections management for the Williams College Museum of Art here in Western Massachusetts. And uh, I'm also a practicing artist, a husband, father, um, and general all around uh, arts lover. Um, a little bit about myself. I grew up in a family of artists. My, my house was a part of the walking tour for the Philadelphia Museum of Art for a period of time. And my father being an oil painter exploited that to the fullest. Uh, we engaged in art exhibits just about every other weekend in my home entire time I grew up. Uh, so I, you know, even from my teenage years was curating small exhibitions and galleries and cafes. Eventually I was offered a job in a museum by Dr. Diane Turner, who's uh, presently the director of the Charles L. Bloxon Afro-American collection in uh, Philadelphia at Temple University. Uh, I've also had great mentors. You see on the bottom right is, uh, in the center is Richard Watson, who worked for uh, several years at the African American Museum as the director of exhibitions and taught me a heck of a lot about exhibitions. On the left is an image from the home of Danny Simmons, who is a great uh, mentor to me as well and the founder of Rush Arts Philadelphia. Um, uh, after uh, high school, I worked for years, I spent some time you know, working exhibitions in the city of Philadelphia before moving to Miami, uh, just at the time of the emergence of Art Basel. Spent a lot of time moonlighting at Art Basel while I worked at the Miami Children's Museum. I was the lead uh, exhibition staff there for years, even through the 2008 downturn, and I had the wonderful opportunity while I was there to work on the design of an exhibition called The Wizard of Oz, which I helped to uh, ultimately travel uh, from city to city throughout the country for the next couple of years uh, before I headed back to Philadelphia for grad school. Uh, while I was in grad school, I worked with the uh, Fireman's Hall Museum and the African American Museum. You'll see at the top a before and after of a design that I did to reclaim ownership over a view, which was obstructed by a building being built just outside the window at the Fireman's Hall Museum. It lost their view. It was now gonna be facing a brick wall so uh, we did this translucent scrim of an image. It looks, the image looks to be taken from out of a window. It's of a fire being put out and all of the white in the image is translucent. So uh, I kept a lot of the sunlight. Below is an image from an exhibition I designed at the African American Museum of Danny Simmons' own art and his um, private collection of uh, African ritual objects and ephemera. Uh, I still manage that collection today which is one of the um, cornerstones of my 
consulting practice uh, after graduating from the University of Arts with um, as the uh, valedictorian of the College of Media Art and Design. I uh, joined the board of the Fireman's Hall Museum. I had the opportunity to design this great mascot for them. You'll see on the left and it, I'm kind of showing you here the transition from a cocktail napkin sketch that one of the firefighters provided to what ultimately became the real world mascot. Um, we had this uh, budgeted for an educational program and uh, firefighter Ben, as we named him, goes around to schools and teaches stop, drop and rock techniques to children as an educational program. Also, you see on the right, a redesigned exhibition, just modernizing a fireboat exhibit they had. So uh, the two bottom images are my design work in the museum. Uh, really had a wonderful opportunity after that to design an exhibition for the American Friends Service Committee who does a ton of work in social action. Uh, famously, they received one of the three letters that Dr. King wrote when he was in prison in Montgomery. Um, uh, the bottom, uh, I'm sorry, the middle right image is of Ojiri Lutalo. It's actually in front of kind of a, a photo op moment that takes place in the exhibition I designed where we used uh, you know, jail scenes to scale and different images to scale so that people could stand in front of the image and, and take pictures and um, try to communicate back about the social action that was going on. Ojiri Lutalo's artwork was included in the exhibition and highlighted and he was famously imprisoned as a member of the Black Panther Party for 22 years in solitary confinement before achieving his release by the woman standing to his right. Uh, who worked for the American Friends Service Committee. So I really have had a great time uh, offering my, my uh, services to projects that I'm really passionate about like this one. This exhibition toured uh, the country as well for two years uh, between 2016 and 2018. After uh, that exhibition was completed, I started my own consultancy. Uh, we've done a lot of projects. Here's an example of kind of a 3D rendering that um, we used to design uh, an exhibition space inside of a museum. On the bottom right image, there's a book that I had the opportunity to illustrate for Dr. Turner, which he later published about uh, the history of Blacks in the military. And then, um, you know, I've always been a visual artist myself. Um, you know, as my career emerged, it gave me the, I guess, bandwidth and opportunity kind of financially to be able to take care of myself and also work on my art, which is, as all artists know, is one of the most difficult balances in life. Um, so the image on the left is a piece I did called Death Drop, and it, um, it's representative of um, transgender ballroom dancing, a move that um, it's kind of a competitive dance move that takes place. Um, and uh, I just wanted to try to give a reference to the kind of underlying connection of uh, competitiveness, um, athleticism and masculinity across all men. I thought this was an interesting work. Um, these are some of my other works. Uh, I uh, usually work anonymously. These two pieces were um, done anonymously as a um, art as activism exhibition that I helped to curate. Um, the piece on the top left is intended to be <laughs> viewed while sitting under the phallus while viewing a video on an iPad below of um, police violence against black males. Um, there's uh, rap music that plays on the headphones. It's a whole experience. Um, this kind of work, uh, art as activism, I usually do anonymously because there's a, a lot of concern for kind of a, a, a just problems that could take place for the museum um, and the political statements being made. A lot of these museums I have a, another affiliation with, so it helps. Uh, one of these cases is seen in the below right, where we had a, I found a sign in my research, African American Museum, Central County Jail. Here's a picture in the center that I did, and it's the title of this piece is called the uh, Kansas African American Museum and the surrounding Central County Jail. The, the, um, Structure here in the center is uh, the African American Museum of Kansas, a historically black church converted to a museum. The surrounding structure was proposed to be built as a jail. Um, and the museum, of course, protested, uh, but the 
jail persisted and later expanded to this really large structure that now surrounds it. This is the present situation of the African American Museum in Kansas. I did this piece uh, on commission for the African American Museum as a part of an exhibition called uh, Arresting Patterns. Here we see another piece from that exhibition of mine. Dude, this is um, a translucent image. You can see through this image when you get up close to it which reclaims the view of uh, the federal prison from the African American Museum. So here in Philadelphia, um, we see a federal prison having been built directly across the street, obstructing the view of the African American Museum. The image is of um, prison inmates sewing military uniforms, and um, it illustrates the connection and correlation between the prison industrial complex um, and um, what I would consider to be modern day slavery. Uh, these um, prisoners are so in military uniforms, the prison is collecting money to keep the prisoners in annually, as well as for the military uniforms, as well as for rehabilitation of these prisoners. So there's three separate checks for um, keeping these guys in jail. Uh, the far right window, you can actually see the prison entrance through the window. And these display cases in front um, had some research in them about the arresting patterns about the uh, school to prison pipeline in Pennsylvania. And here's an image of me at the opening. I'd like to turn back to Sydney now, uh, if I've bored you all enough. And um, just uh, if we could bring up images from the um, exhibition. Sure thing. Um, so so I'd just like to say again, uh, this was a really amazing experience and thank all the artists who submitted artwork and um, all of the artists who were included, uh, please, you know, feel very deserving. Uh, I was very honored to um, have the opportunity to look at this work. And as we discuss, you know, as we get into our conversation about the juried exhibition, I'd just like to remind everyone that, um, you know, artwork is completely subjective and uh, it's a real challenge to um, do this all virtually, as you all might imagine. Um, and uh, I'd just like to say too, that it's a special challenge, I think, for artists with, uh, new, for new media artists and artists with three-dimensional works who, um, you know, we have some limitations with, um, how that work can be displayed virtually. So I'm sure that'll come up further in the conversation and I'll turn it back over to Sydney. Okay, can everybody see uh, the exhibition okay? What we would like to do is um, we would like to review NOAA selections for the award winners and we're going to start at honorable mention. No, if you would like to share your thoughts on honorable mention. Sure. Can we see that one up on the screen at all? Um, is it showing up for you okay? I just see the first place piece. Whoa. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. So I'm seeing it as the honorable mention piece. I don't know if there's a lag or. Well, why don't you start out by describing the piece? I'm not able to see it. Ah, oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I think. <laughs> The reasons why this piece was selected as one of the winners, uh, it kind of goes without saying, I think it's a really rich uh, visual landscape that was presented here. 
um, you know, it's a representation of work. I did not know much about this work when I um, made the, uh, the scoring of it, or um, even when it was selected as one of the winners here. Um, but I think um, just the kind of layered richness, it really stood out for me. Uh, it does a lot for the eye in terms of challenging with just the two colors, the eye to go and zoom in to the minutia and detail in the, in the work. Um, I kind of imagine this as being some sort of a woodcut. Uh, later, I found um, that this was a sort of a, a collage of paper. Um, Sydney, can you speak a little bit to the, the mediums in this work? Yes, so this is by Rosa Leff. Uh, she actually has had a solo exhibition here back in winter um, 2018. So she uh, works in hand cut paper. Uh, so all of the lines you see here in the black cut by hand uh, in the lighter color there for contrast is a background paper. Um, so yes, very impressive. Yeah, um, this was, uh, you know, one of my favorite works from the entire exhibition. I say that and I, I wanted to be clear that, um, uh, you know, when we jury artwork and this goes for just about every curator or, you know, anybody who's kind of tasked with this responsibility, it never goes to your own personal preference. You know, it's always about uh, the intent of the artwork and how well that intent was delivered. So what did the artist set out to do? What did they want for your experience to be with their artwork once it left their studio? Because once the artwork leaves the studio, uh, it no longer belongs to the artist. It belongs to you know us and you know what our perceptions of it are. And we all show up with our own perceptions. So um, you know I enjoyed this work, but the work you know became one of the award winners here as all the works did and and the reason why all, any of the works that were included were included was uh because the intent that the artist set out for this work was you know delivered so extremely well uh it's beyond reproach of you know whether anyone prefers this work or not of um, how great of a work of art it really is and also you know what a testament to the artist's skill level that it is so uh this one was a pleasure. I will say this discussion around the honorable mention was very difficult on, you know, uh, which works to cut away and not give ribbon, ribbons to. It was one of the you know, really toughest decisions of my week for sure. Um, I guess we should go on to the, the, the third place winner. So here's the third place winner. This is by Iris Posner um, of Silver Spring, Maryland. And the title is Re-Education Re Camp. Um, and I will not butcher the uh, words in parentheses. Hopefully you can read those on your own. Um, and then Noah, can you share a little bit about your selection for this piece? Sure. Uh, this one was really interesting, I felt. Um, I looked at this piece and I wasn't sure what it was at first. I think this was um, right away a real challenge for me. Um, it being a three dimensional piece, looking at it virtually to be judged on its merits um, is tough. Uh, the first thing with three dimensional works, you, you have to do a double take at the mediums to understand that the three dimensional works and that it's not a photograph of a three dimensional object, which is often things that are also submitted to art exhibits. <laughs> So this exhibit really was like, uh, it had some really, you know, great three-dimensional works in it. And this was one that I, I, I had to really check and make sure I understood the scale that those were ping pong balls versus tangerines. And then I wanted to look even more closely to understand how careful the artist was in the assembly, the craftsmanship of this object. It, it, it doesn't look like they were terribly delicate with it so much as they were, you know, really trying to express something. And it, it, it wasn't, you know, the, the care in which they assembled the object was not the focal point 
of the design so much as what the what the final composition was. So uh, I thought that um, you know what I what I saw here when I first looked at it was right away it spoke to me about um, imprisonment or you know uh, people's kind of the restriction of of the individual. And I saw the, and this is just my own kind of interpretation is like what I show up with as any visitor shows up with their own stuff. Looking at artwork was uh, I saw like, uh, maybe this is like a lot of jumpsuits of prisoners and we keep our oranges, the new black, you know, prisoners in these orange jumpsuits. And there's one white uh, ping pong ball in there. Does that speak to, you know, the disproportionate numbers of racial inequality in prisons? Does that speak to the prisoners versus maybe the correctional officers? Um, and then this kind of square uh, rectangular shape, uh, it's kind of a monolith in and of itself, which spoke to, you know, the whole thing kind of said a lot about um, you know, mass incarceration to me. And then after I finished with that, I realized that that maybe wasn't the intent at all. And maybe I was just reading all this into it. And uh, the fact that it had sent my mind racing in so many directions with, uh, you know, kind of a relatively rudimentary design of this kind of, you know, a rectangular object um, made me realize how impactful a piece it was and how much the composition of it resonated with me, regardless of what the intent was. So uh, as a object of art, I found this highly successful. Um, I was able to assign meaningful intent to it for myself um, in a way that was not relative to all of the three-dimensional objects that it looked at. Some objects are intended to be completely abstract and you know that has its own merit as well. So I don't wanna take anything away from that. Um, and I did wanna point out through this object, the challenges in jurying three-dimensional objects virtually, which, um, you know, it's really hard to understand the full intent of a three-dimensional object if you're not there to look around it and see its shadows and understand its uh, silhouette and um, uh, all of the meaning behind it. So um, I, I really thought this was amazing. It, it was able to transcend all of those things like really, really elegantly and um, deliver on its intent for the artist. So uh, congratulations to this artist. Um, this was not hard selection as one of the winners. <clears throat> and I think we can look at the runner ups work. Yes, um, I just wanted to mention that there is a little bit of a lag. So apologies if you are not following along with Noah's um, it, with Noah's voice as he's speaking about each piece, um, trying our best to So here we are at second. It should pop up for yep, you. There it is. Great. Great. Yeah, so um, this work uh, I, I found really interesting. Um, this was another one when I looked at it, I immediately started to ask questions about it. What is it made of? Uh, how deep does it come away from the wall, right? What are its dimensions? Uh, what is the technique that is displayed here? Uh, is it inside of a book? Is it encased in a, in a frame? Um, mostly I spent a lot of time staring at that bottom right foot and being really impressed with the smoothness in which the artist brought that foot into the third dimension and then pours the rest of the image um, onto, the, onto the flatter surface. Um, and I'm, I'm still not a thousand percent of how the artist pulled this off. Um, there's definitely a kind of an applique and layering of materials here that actually provides a real depth that adds to kind of the, 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 the visual motif here, but um, how they actually did it um, without seeing the piece in person and kind of scratching at it myself uh, is tough. But um, I think this kind of is another example of kind of transcending this, this piece is not to my particular taste. Uh, you know, I, I don't really 
understand a ton of what's going on in it. It seems like it could be from a storybook or something like that, but it just, it, none of that mattered to me because um, it was executed uh, so well with such a high degree of skill and craftsmanship, the way it's assembled, uh, the way it's composed, um, you know, the, the visual trick it does with the eye to pull you straight in from that back right foot all the way up those stairs in the center of the piece. Um, and then giving you that little window through those top uh, cross structures um, that really kind of hammer home how deep we're looking into this image. Um, this is great. And uh, this was another one I, I wondered, uh, you know, at first, is this some sort of a photograph of an object? Or is it an object? Is it, you know, um, three dimensional? Is there a light box behind it? Or, you know, what did they do here? Did they carve that, that frame? And I think, um, when all the questions go into how the artist pulled this off, as opposed to what was the intent being delivered, that's a really strong signifier of a successful work. And uh, you know, all of the works, I think, um, and, you know, artwork in general, depending on who's looking at it, and, and depending on the you know intent, is either successful or unsuccessful. You know, it's never good or bad. Uh, this one was extremely successful, and. Uh, Cheers to this artist as well. Uh, this was this one was a really tough decision as to where this landed in the awards um, uh, because of, uh, of the high degree of skill uh, displayed here. So, congratulations. Um, and I don't believe that we mentioned this when we approached the piece. But this is by Julia Drake Posein uh, from Frederick, Maryland, and the title is "How Far Must We Go to Stop Time." And everybody can read more about each piece and each artist on the labels that accompany the artworks. All right. And while we're um, transitioning, can we just read the three previous uh, works that we presented again? Just the, the names of the artists and titles of the works one more time. Sure. So here we have, uh, this is honorable mention. This is Before the Rush by Rosa Leff. This is hand cut paper, honorable mention. You can see this, okay, correct? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay, but if you just mention our names, at least we, you know, made sure they got their uh, their spotlight here. We really deserve it. Uh, yeah, I can see Rosa Leff now. Okay, great. <laughs> so this is Rosa Leff uh, for the Rush, honorable mention, and she is based in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. <sighs> um, here we have third, and this is by Iris Posner of Silver Spring, Maryland. The title is Re-Education Camp. I will leave that bit off. Um, and again, you can read more about this piece by visiting the exhibition and reading the label. This is third prize. Can you see this one? Not quite yet. There it is. Okay. Alrighty. And then the one that we just left. Is how far must we go to stop time by Juliet Drake Hossein by and she is based out of Frederick, Maryland. And are you able to see this. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. So those are our first three award winners. And finally, the first prize winner is by Douglas Saruba of Hagerstown, Maryland. The title is Untitled Black Series number three. And Noah, if you'd like to share more about your selection. Yes, uh, so congratulations to Douglas. Uh, this was very well deserved. Um, this one was not for me a terribly tough selection. This piece spoke to me immediately out of the entire, you know, 500 or so works that were submitted. Um, just a really elegant composition, very simple. Uh, there's a horizon line here. Um, 
you know, is there ground underneath? Is there sky above? Or, you know, what exactly are we looking at here? Um, I think the gradation coming up from the really dark black into the center and the bottom half of the piece um, really provide a sense of depth. Um, and then this is another work that I was very curious as to, you know, was this an image? It's, you know, somebody somehow, um, you know, Photoshop or, you know, do some di uh, digital image manipulation of a sunrise or, or uh, you know, crack of dawn kind of situation. And it, it was just very curious to me, but I knew that um, my eye was really drawn to the black in the top. And then, you know, as it changed, as it kind of transitions from the bottom to the center, and then the, the center kind of really glowed. And uh, I thought that really that pink moment in the middle um, really did something with the light. Uh, is there a silver lining there? Um, and it, it really gave me a sense of kind of current events and where we are today, a kind of always darkest before the dawn moment of um, you know this really kind of deep, deep darkness, but the emergence of light and uh, how hopeful and beautiful that could be. So uh, once again, this is completely what I brought to the table when uh, looking at this piece for myself. But um, I also believed that um, the uh, you know the the, the honor um, of winning was uh, not wasted on this piece, and that it was really um, spoke to the artist's level of skill, not knowing the artist or whoever they were, but just what they displayed here in this particular work. Um, that uh, this was you know really beyond reproach in terms of um, the skill they approached this composition with and and the execution of it. So, um, Sydney, will you tell us a little bit about the mediums and, um, you know, what, what is particular special about this work? Um, yes, yeah, so Douglas uh, is most well known for being a jewelry designer and goldsmith. Uh, he recently rediscovered painting and he's been utilizing this paint from what I gather with my conversations with him um, that is meant to be absolute black. Uh, it's a special paint that you can't get anywhere. Uh, and then the paint here in the middle, the white and the pink is a phosphorescent. So while the lights are on, it absorbs that light. And when the lights are off, it actually glows. So that's a fascinating tidbit there. Um, so it glows in the dark? The, the middle, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this pigment used before. But I think this is like one of the most effective, you know, uh, applications of it that I've ever seen. And uh, I, I didn't realize that's what was used here when I selected this piece. But um, I think it just kind of goes to show you the kind of mastery of the materials that were used and um, how, you know, such a simple composition could be so effective um, in conjunction with using those materials exactly as they were intended by the company who, who made them for the purpose that they made them. So uh, really kind of a full realization of all of the elements that went into, you know, the intent being delivered to this piece. And it was realized in their winning of this, uh, of this uh, award. So uh, congratulations. Thank you, Noah. Um, there were a couple other pieces that you had mentioned. Uh, would you like to review your selection for those as well, or would you like to move on to questions? Um, I would like to highlight, if we could, you know, with, with respect to the lag and everything, if we could look at the, um, yep, that's the one. I, 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 you know, I thought this one was a, you know, amazing work. Uh, another very simple, elegant composition. Um, looking at this piece, you really feel like you're there. And then the, you know, the, the kind of richness in the absence of color displayed in this piece, I think was amazing. Um, so uh, I think it, this is another one. It's really tough, I think, for um, traditional um, works like uh, photographs, and um, just, you know, representational paintings, uh, landscapes, um, that type of art, I think, has um, challenges breaking through in these type of venues when you're juxtaposing it and comparing it even in a lot of cases to contemporary or, or modern works or even three-dimensional works. 
And I think um, where these type of, you know, brilliant compositions of photography live um, in that, you know, conversation, I think is important to keep sight of um, because it, it does have um, great artistic merit, and creativity and craftsmanship as well as, um, just as well as a, a, a contemporary composition. So I thought this one was really great and, um, you know, also deserving of um, attention. The other one was the penguin. Mm -hmm. I hope the artist who made this penguin is, you know, on this um, and that they leave a comment. Uh, this was just a wonderful moment, I thought, in the exhibition. Um, I, I, I spent a lot of time looking at this and trying to understand, you know, um, you know, just imagine what the intent was here, how, you know, I, I had to look at the scale of this and you know, I just thought about it as, as you know, I've, I've seen some movies uh, uh, with cartoon penguins and this kind of reminded me of that. But uh, overall, I thought even if you take out the words with this, it still kind of says the same thing. And it's just, uh, you know, such a playful work and um, another example of how, um, you know, an, uh, uh, an artist can really elegantly deliver their intent and it can cut through all, you know, all the kind of mediums and layers that we, that we, uh, you know, have to kind of get through in looking at art. So this just as an image, if I would have saw this as somebody on it, you know, that somebody had it on as a bumper sticker or a tattoo or, 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 uh, or in an oil painting or a sculpture. I mean, it, it's, it's just a, a very fun work and, uh, uh, it made me happy, so I wanted to talk about it here. Uh, this one I thought was also really deserving of the spotlight. So congratulations to this artist for being included in the exhibition. And with that, um, maybe we should leave the rest of the time for questions. Yes. Um, so according to the comments, we haven't had any inquiries. But we did have one comment um, from Juan Gomez, who says, hi, Noah, good to see you. Congrats on your new gig out there. We miss you out here. Juan, hi, Juan. Juan is a brilliant artist in his own right. Um, I encourage everybody to check out Juan on, uh, just Google him, he's, he's, he's great. Okay, um, all right, I'm going to stop sharing. So, uh, thanks Noah for talking about your selections. Um, thank you again to everyone for tuning in. Thank you to our participating artists. Uh, Noah, is there any other parting words you'd like to say? No, I'd just like to thank all the artists that submitted artwork, those who were included in the exhibition and those who weren't, and encourage all of them to art harder and just keep going and be encouraged in these, you know, that hopefully, you know, everybody's, you know, taken care of during this time and, um, you know, just continue to be creative and, and, and in any way you can because the things that you guys are creating, all of you artists are, you know, really meaningful for all of the world and uh, is, you know, something worth living for for all of us. So. Uh, don't stop doing what you guys are doing. And I also just like to thank the Delphine Arts Center for putting this together and kind of persevering through, you know, really extreme conditions to make sure that this went forward and that all of these artists work was recognized. Um, it was really a challenge, you know, as I'm sure you can all imagine, but um, I think they did a great job and put together a really elegant exhibition. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Noah and Sydney, and thank you all again so much for watching. The chat will end after we end the live stream, but please feel free to ask questions in the comment box for the recorded video, which will be here at the same link. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and check out the other videos on our channel. If you'd like to uh, tell us more about, uh, tell us your ideas, please feel free to share ideas for other videos. If you like what you see on our channel, subscribe and tap that notification bell to get a notification of future videos. And thank you all again so much for joining us. Take care and enjoy this gorgeous day.